Okay, so welcome to the webinar. Uh, we'll look at some of the uh, live order flow uh, in Bookmap. Uh, first, uh, risk disclaimer, trading equities and futures involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not indicative of future results. For more information, go to bookmap.com. If you're a member there, you have access to free resources uh, and uh, education materials. Uh, and reach out to us at support at veloxpro.com or support at bookmap.com with any questions. Um, if uh, you are uh, in, uh, new to Bookmap here uh, and you want to give it a try, this is where you can find it. It's at the bookmap.com website. And you can see that there are two different versions here, basic and advanced. Okay. 49 per month for the basic, 99 per month for the advanced. They are billed quarterly, so every three months. Uh, but you get a 14-day trial period here. So uh, uh, try it out, see if it's uh, something that uh, works for you. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, give it a shot, you know. Uh, we offer that so that uh, you can um, uh, integrate this into your trading uh, and uh, uh, start to understand the order flow. So you're in these webinars, uh, that's excellent. Uh, but there are a lot of other resources. So let me let me show you that. Uh, and that is uh, our YouTube page here, uh, for example. Uh, you can come here and click on uh, playlists. So just look up book map uh, in YouTube, uh, search for it. Uh, and here are the recorded webinars. So if you want to review some of the recorded webinars or if you miss one, uh, you can uh, review them here. They're, they're all up here uh, for uh, uh, your uh, viewing. Uh, and then there's another one here, the um, uh, education uh, course that we just put together. Okay, so there's just there's four videos here. Uh, they're about an hour each, and they go through uh, a lot of different details. Uh, so uh, if you haven't uh, uh, watched some of these, uh, then uh, and you're new to Bookmap here. I, I really, I highly recommend it. I think you'll find it very helpful. Uh, we start off with just basic market mechanics, uh, and for a lot of traders, that's new information. Okay, uh, and then we go into the um, uh, uh, structure uh, around those mechanics, and then we go into strategies within those structures and mechanics, and then we go through advanced. Um, uh, in part four, we go through the advanced uh, setups and uh, uh, looking at uh, more correlations and confluences. All right. Uh, and if you want the most up-to-date information, uh, you can uh, follow us here on Twitter. Okay. And you can see the last, um, just uh, uh, yesterday we uh, tweeted about uh, one of the setups here from uh, the uh, educational course. Okay. So uh, this is um, uh, detailing out uh, something to look for. Uh, in book map, all right? Okay. Uh, let's see, gone through that. Ah, um, you can also go to the educational, uh, if you log into book map, uh, you can see all these video snippets uh, are here. They're also on the YouTube page. So let's go back to playlists. And um, uh, yeah, I would recommend um, definitely watching some of these. They're very short, uh, but they go through really, um, uh, pretty profound uh, order flow uh, phenomena here um, that uh, you can you can directly apply to your trading. All right, so uh, take a look at those as well. I think you'll find them really helpful. Okay, so how many how many traders in here are new to Bookmap? If you could uh, just uh, let, let me know here uh, if you are uh, uh, one of the first times that uh, you're you're seeing uh, Bookmap here. Okay. All right. So there's a few. Um, okay. Well, um, uh, let me uh, let me start off here and just go through the basics, and uh, I'll keep it quick. We've been going through it all week long, uh, and um, uh, you know we'll uh, kind of uh, shorten it down so we can uh, dive right into the uh, live order flow uh, and analysis. Okay. So uh, this is the Bookmap site or Bookmap uh, app. And um, let's, uh, I'm going to turn off uh, and just show you um, what you're, we can leave that on, uh, what you're looking at here in book map, okay? All right. 
So let me adjust this for candlesticks. Let's look at five minute candlesticks. Okay. All right. So this is a five minute candlestick chart. Okay. And we have a, a sub chart here of, of volume, as you can see. Uh, and most of us are, are very familiar looking at this. Uh, however, there's a problem here. Uh, we don't, there's so much data that we're not seeing. Uh, in fact, uh, there's about 95% of the data that we're not receiving here. Uh, we're just um, uh, putting this together and the order flow together by by candlesticks, open, high, low, close of a specific time period. Uh, and uh, and that's not very uh, transparent here. Uh, we do have volume in a subchart, and that helps. Uh, so we can start to gauge uh, some of the activity uh, within those five-minute periods. Uh, but um, uh, we don't know uh, where it traded. Uh, we don't know uh, how it traded, uh, it, what kind of speed it had to it, uh, the size, the aggressor. It was it more selling or more buying. Uh, and, um, uh, yeah, I think that about covers it. So um, let me first turn on the uh, historical uh, best bid and offer here. Okay. So all we've done now here is layer on top. Um, the uh, historical best bid and offer okay, within the candlesticks. So already you're getting uh, a little more insight, and you can you can already see like uh, maybe the speed of some of these moves, uh, and we can zoom in and we can see the speed of this move here. Okay, uh, and then uh, we're starting to understand little areas of structure now too, just with the historical best bid and offer. So, you know, it, uh, it went sideways here for a bit and it broke hard and quickly uh, and then came down to this level and went sideways for, for a while here for a couple of uh, uh, sessions uh, or uh, candlesticks and then, um, uh, and then it started to go back up, okay? So that's already a little more transparent, uh, but um, uh, what about the volume? Uh, we don't know I any of that information. Okay, so uh, let's uh, let's turn that on. Now we're getting a lot more insight uh, to what's going on. Okay, and this is just the uh, plotting the volume. Uh, let's go into this little section here between these five-minute uh, candles, uh, and um, you can see now each vertical dotted line here is a minute. Uh, so we we can actually uh, start to map out like each minute here and start to understand what happened in these five minutes. Okay, so we went kind of sideways here for a little bit. There was a little more selling than buying, as you can see, because uh, we've recorded and plotted on the historical best bid and offer uh, the aggressor. So a market buy is a green dot and a market sell is a red dot. Okay, now these pie displays uh, is a, um, uh, a dot that uh, has several trades within it. In fact, there was such a flurry of activity that um, – uh, we uh, we have to display it uh, as a as a bigger dot uh, to give that reference to how much traded, uh, and then also uh, to give uh, it uh, the overall like what did that time period that little uh, flurry of activity what did it comprise of? And we can see that there in for this big dot here we can see there's more uh, selling than buying, okay, not much, but uh, look at look at how they uh, hit the bid here. Uh, driving price down, and we can see that certainly there's more selling, okay? And that shouldn't come as a surprise uh, because we can see the, the quick move to the downside, okay? But um, I, I want to show you that uh, this this data is not um, aggregated, okay? And and this is uh, uh, solves a, a real problem with uh, footprint charts, okay? Because uh, they are time-based or bar rotation-based, so... Uh, you know, it, it's possible that uh, you only have like a, a couple of uh, candlesticks on your footprint chart for a, a days of a day of activity. Uh, but um, a book map doesn't aggregate like that. So, and let me show you what I mean. So, I'm going to zoom into this dot, okay, and we're going to start to split apart all of the data. Now we're starting to understand really what occurred here. Okay, uh, we're down at millisecond level. And we can see the algorithmic activity. Okay, look at how these these uh, cells here are spaced out, uh, and you can see that um, uh, it's clearly algorithmic activity uh, hitting the uh, hitting the bid here. Okay, but as I zoom back out, notice how uh, the um, 
just graphically, this data is aggregated. Okay, and then as I as I zoom out a little bit more, finally uh, we'll get a, a pie display because there's both buying and selling in there. Okay, so we give you the overall. So all the data is here; it's not lost. Uh, in fact, you can click on the show data tip tool, and we can hover over this area, and we know that there was 489 uh, contracts that traded. Okay, um, hold on just a minute. Okay. All right. So now we're going to start to gauge the transactions that took place uh, within this five-minute period, and that's uh, that's a lot more helpful. Uh, look at the activity down here uh, compared to up here, and that would be completely lost in your candlestick chart, right? Uh, you 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 simply you're not going to see it. Okay. You're going to see a flurry of activity here, but that's for that five-minute period. You don't know where it took place. Okay, and you don't know how much. What if uh, there was just a, a big cluster of volume right in the middle? Okay, and then you saw the move to the downside. Well, I'd be looking for a retracement right back to that area. Uh, and um, uh, instead, we have the opposite here. The, the big flurry of activity uh, took place on the downside. And um, uh, what occurs is we actually get a retest of that uh, high uh, volume node. Uh, and then we get to return back into the range and, and uh, uh, into value here. Okay, so uh, already just uh, you wouldn't you wouldn't see that in a uh, uh, a candlestick chart, uh, and uh, in a um, uh, footprint chart it, it's good. But what you're not going to see is this retest. Okay, because it's going to be aggregated. It's going to take all of this and put it together. Okay. Now we can start to understand the order flow uh, in this area here. So you can look to uh, uh, look for the uh, the interest here, uh, and um, uh, if uh, uh, you can see that uh, right here, for example, uh, we have a lack of uh, of selling. Okay, the sellers start to dry up, okay. and instead, what what occurs here is uh, they start to hit the bid. Or I'm sorry, they start to lift the offer uh, aggressively. Okay. And uh, and we can see. I mean, I'm just going to take the candlestick off. It's uh, it's confusing. Uh, you know, this is this is the area here of interest, right here, uh, because um, uh, that's where uh, we see exhaustion and we see the activity on the other side now lifting the offer, uh, and uh, that is lost here in that candlestick. Okay, so there we go, uh, and. Um, Okay, so uh, that's uh, how some of these issues are solved uh, with Bookmap. Uh, understanding that uh, and um, <laughs> confusing, um, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, but um, let's uh, let's uh, now. This is good. This is really helpful. Uh, but there's still a lot of data here uh, in this market that we have no idea about. Okay, so let's look at a dome here. Okay, the dome over here, and this is the dome in book map. All right, uh, we have the uh, a best bid and offer right here, this inside market. Okay, and that's reflected in the dotted line here. And this is your last traded volume uh, right here, this number. And, and then um, uh, we're looking at the depth on the uh, on the on the bid and the depth here on the offer. Okay, so this is the current market. Okay, this is. If you show up uh, to an auction, these are all the participants in that auction right now. Uh, and you can see them bidding and offering at very specific price levels. And these numbers change all day long. Okay, uh, Maybe they want to add more. Maybe they, they're not interested in uh, buying or selling. And they pull their liquidity. So uh, that is a um, uh, that's really good to see uh, in, a, in a dome. Uh, however, there's a problem here with the dome, uh, is that uh, this this data here is fleeting. We don't know. Uh, as soon as these numbers start to change, we have no historical record of it. Okay, so we don't know uh, what it was uh, previously. Were they really interested in buying here? What was their behavior at this area? Uh, what about the areas around it? Were there more buyers stepping in uh, in these areas here, uh, or were they pulling and adding to lower levels? Uh, this is this gives us tremendous insight to the auction and what's going on, and that is rather difficult to read in a dome. 
Okay, so let's turn on the heat map here, uh, and this is the final piece. Well, there's also the indicators, um, but um, let's turn on the heat map, and uh, I'll turn off the indicators for a moment. And now we're starting to get a clearer picture. Okay, now we're starting to see the interest, the intent to trade uh, at these price levels. Look at the high liquidity here, 1,600 contracts, 1,500 a, a tick or a couple ticks uh, above. Okay, and, and right in this area where we noticed our little our little uh, pullback here, okay, and exhaustion, and then they start to um, uh, 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 lift the offer in this area here. Well, look at they came in underneath and aggressively wanted to buy, not down at these levels, not at lower lows, uh, at a at a um, uh, a higher area. Okay, and uh, that that skews the uh, the auction. Okay, now there's uh, there's buyers that they're aggressive. They're at a higher area, and we can see the behavior here. Okay, that helped push uh, price up, and uh, and it's approaching now the high liquidity here uh, on the um, on the offer. Okay, so um, and uh, let me let me cover. There's a, a really important um, uh, distinction here uh, to go over, and that is between uh, longer term high liquidity and shorter term high liquidity. Okay, so that longer term liquidity is down here. Okay, it's down at this 61 and a half area. They've been staying in the book for a long time. Okay, and uh, on the offer, it's up here. Okay, it's at 66 and a half. And now they're starting to show at 66. Okay, but we don't, we haven't, we haven't seen a lot of history here at 66. So we don't know. Uh, if uh, maybe they're uh, uh, not interested in trading, maybe trying to spoof the market lower, um, we, we, we don't have that insight yet. Uh, but uh, uh, so far, they're staying in the book. Okay, uh, but we can see them adding and pulling in this area. Okay, so uh, that's exactly what um, uh, this historical uh, heat map uh, is, is going to show you. It's going to under you're going to understand this area here at 66. Okay, do they really want to trade? Okay. It's looking pretty good that they're they're being aggressive. Uh, they, they're at a lower area, okay. Uh, as price is coming up toward them, okay. So it looks like they want to trade, right? But if we zoom in a little bit closer here, uh, we can see at the last second uh, they're starting to pull, okay. Uh, and you can see that behavior right in here. Okay. So they're getting kind of cold feet. Maybe they, uh, uh, they're they looking to, uh, to, you know, you can see them adding up above here uh, at 67 now instead. Okay. And um, so uh, I, I would say I would gauge this area here as, um, uh, or at least at 66 as, uh, you know, they're, they're somewhat interested, but uh, uh, it's not, uh, it's not very convincing at all. Okay. All right. And then, uh, and then you can see they, um, uh, they end up pulling that liquidity. Okay, they don't want to be buyers. Okay. All right. Now we come back to the market. As price is moving away, they jump back in. Okay. So, um, uh, yeah, it. Uh, uh, this is that longer term liquidity up here uh, at 66 and a half, and the shorter term liquidity uh, is, um, at, you know, uh, kind of. Um, I would say this is more medium term. Uh, you know, because they're they're staying in here. Uh, the um, uh, and, and and we can because we can read it right now the shorter term high liquidity this is the distinction okay the longer term liquidity they want to stay in the book and they want to trade for the most part or at least we can assume that uh, until price gets up there the shorter term liquidity uh, the high liquidity in these areas here uh, this uh, is a skew in the auction uh, all of a sudden uh, think about uh, this being an auction and think about that someone uh, comes to the um, uh, a market with a lot more supply okay and they're aggressive uh, you know they want they want to sell at a low low level okay that's new information for the uh, for the auction whereas before the auction was reading it and uh, you know it's between these higher levels here okay and this skew here and also here and here uh, has an effect on price. All right, so um, in fact, um, uh, it looks like uh, uh, perhaps they um, 
uh, you know, they want to show uh, that liquidity they don't want to trade because they pull it. Uh, but, uh, you know, they, they skew that auction to press price down into uh, perhaps some of these areas down here. Okay. And then once they, they get filled or, you know, they get uh, their orders, uh, uh, yeah, their orders filled here, then, uh, uh, then, they, then they are, uh, they're out, you know, they pull. Okay. And actually we can read some of this intent here. Uh, these guys actually pulled here. Uh, as well at uh, 63 and a half. Okay. Uh, but uh, there could be potential iceberg here. Let's turn down that, the indicator uh, and uh, look for iceberg detector. Okay. All right. Well, we can see pretty significant iceberg right here, uh, right down into that area. Uh, we go through uh, a couple ticks here, or let's see, just one tick. Uh, and then we come back uh, and then we see another iceberg here for uh, 108. Okay. We also see on the other side, you know, 330. Uh, so it's kind of back and forth on the iceberg. Uh, they're uh, they're getting filled before their high liquidity, or they'll they'll pull it and then get filled. Okay. All right. So that covers the uh, longer term liquidity uh, and the uh, shorter term high liquidity that does not have the intent to trade. Okay. And and you can see very clearly uh, how this can be helpful because we're channeling here between uh, two areas of high liquidity, all right? And in fact, that's uh, indicative of uh, the profile here. Look at our profile, volume profile. We can see that it's a, you know, basically a, a single distribution, okay? In between two areas of high liquidity. So you volume profile guys, uh, you can, you can uh, start to match uh, the auction and the intent to trade at some of these areas and understand what's going on uh, within uh, volume profile theory. All right, responsive buyers would be down here, responsive sellers would be up here, uh, and here they are. All right. So anyway, um, I, I hope that is uh, is helpful. Uh, we've been kind of reading the uh, market uh, along the way here as well, so we understand we're channeling right now. Uh, we understand the uh, the move down here uh, and. Um, yeah, okay, so we had another move down here, and we can see pretty significant iceberg down here, over 1,064 contracts, or I'm sorry, 1,064 contracts that traded that weren't in the limit order book, uh, and uh, this is this is where we saw that that uh, that reversal, okay, or trade back into the range, okay, reversal on a shorter term, all right, so... Um, uh, and, and here's our retest. In fact, we got a couple of retests here, it looks like. Okay, well, one one's pretty significant. All right. Okay, a few questions. Uh, let's see. Uh, Darcy, why don't, you, why don't you try this? Come up to the, uh, what version of Bookmap do you have? You might want to go to Help uh, and then About and find out what, what version you have. Uh, and then uh, secondly, uh, uh, click on the studies configuration here and then click on iceberg detector uh, and just make sure that it's, um, that it's on. You know, click, make sure that this is checked and that this is checked as well. All right. Okay, let me know if that works for you. Yeah, more or less. I mean, um, you know, th this 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 area here, uh, where there's iceberg is, uh, is um, it's absorbed. You know, I mean, an iceberg basically absorbed uh, uh, all of the uh, aggressive selling, okay, or a lot of it. Okay? So you can start to put put these pieces together, uh, and and we got we have a lot of insight to this activity now. Okay, what's going on down here? who the players are, uh, what their uh, uh, game is, uh, and um, uh, looking for um, uh, some sort of uh, uh, clues or insights to um, uh, what might uh, might occur afterwards here. And we can see uh, what, what occurred. We have exhaustion on the retest down here, or very, very little trading, okay? Uh, and then... Um, and then we can see the uh, they started to uh, lift the offer here with aggressive buys, and then they skewed the book. Okay, just those three things alone will significantly help your trading. Okay, uh, 
Okay, I were at a level here. Okay, we're at a level below this swing. These guys absorbed. Okay, we get our retest, no more selling, and then we see them aggressively lift the offer, and we see an imbalance in the book. Okay, this was good for if like uh, you, let's say you got in right around here in this area here, maybe 64. Well, you, you at least, and you were looking for a target maybe uh, at the swing here uh, at this area. Well, you, you got a point and a half out of it uh, in, a, in a pretty slow day. And that's not bad. And that's not bad. Oh, I'm sorry, did, was it a point and a half or was it uh, 64? Yeah, let's say let's say you got in at 64 and you'd probably get out at uh, 65 and a half. Yeah, about a point and a half, let's say. Okay, let's just be fair here. Okay. Darcy, let me know if you um, uh, see your iceberg now. Oh, okay, let's see. Uh, configuration, when I click on iceberg uh, box, nothing happens. Hmm. Uh, what version of bookmap do you have? Version 5.0. Uh, not sure if it's available in 5.0. I can't, I can't recall. Um, uh, the new, the new, uh, the new iceberg indicator. Uh, but um, uh, anyway, um, uh, yeah, uh, please re reach out to us at support at bookmap.com uh, and we, we can help you out. Okay. Let's see, Francisco, uh, a couple questions here. Let's see. Um, oh, you're welcome, Darcy. Let's see the uh, red dot on the floor. Trader, trader. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, these games go on all day long. Uh, especially, I, I find that um, you know these these uh, sideways days or this kind of sideways action can be um, very tricky, uh, and um, uh, you know we can start to put the order flow here together. Uh, we we already have the structure. I mean, and the structure is being defined here by the uh, uh, the bids and offers. You know, we're we're tr we're trading between the high liquidity on each side. Okay. Uh, and uh, and then you can see the range here. But look at all these little trappy areas. Uh, you know, it just it happens all day long. They they trap below here. They use icebergs here, uh, and then they uh, they skew the auction to the opposite side to drive price up into this area here. Okay. So um, uh, and then again, like um, uh, you know, we'll we'll see uh, uh, this little. Let me get to it here uh, look at this little trading range here okay and a, and a break above it like that uh, and um, uh, so um, uh, yeah I mean these uh, we don't even get it well we get the retest now uh, but um, we're still rather you know kind of kind of trading here hmm no no that's not true okay uh, looking, trying to put together like a, a better example uh, where a little bit clearer, what we see is um, we'll see structures within structures, okay? So, um, and, and these markets are, are fractal, uh, and you can read this uh, really, really clearly. Um, I guess uh, uh, the structure broke and we came down to the POC of this structure. It's going to be right here in the middle, more or less. Uh, and um, uh, we can uh, we can see that uh, you know when it broke here, it went sideways and consolidated up here, uh, and then it, it went up here as well, uh, but then it broke, right? And we came right back down. So right now, like I said, it's a little murky here, but you can see these structures rather rather clearly. Uh, and um, uh, but you'll see them get trapped in an area, uh, uh, you know, and then they'll sweep the book to the upside. Uh, and then, uh, uh, you know, continue on uh, and um, uh, come up to some of the high liquidity as the target. So you can always uh, look for that high liquidity uh, as being uh, your uh, your targets. It's already understood by the auction. Uh, and um, uh, they, uh, you know, the market needs that high liquidity to trade. Okay. So um, uh, anyway, let's see. Any other questions? Yeah, yeah, very, very balanced uh, today. Uh, uh, you know, it's the, the profile. You see that 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 big volume cluster down here. 
that we've been covering. You can see the profile here, just a little bit of a, um, you know, tail on that. Um, but, um, but uh, this, this, this profile here looks pretty good. All right. Okay. Okay. Ah, the, um, this tool tip, uh, you can use this if you like, uh, and um, uh, you can hover over these areas and you can see exactly what was pulled or added in these areas. So we have uh, the date, the time, and what was on the ask at this price level. Okay. And then we can see that they started to pull, uh, or I'm sorry, they started to add in this area here is because it, it got brighter. Okay, so we went from 1450 on up to 1475, 1492, uh, and then uh, we can see 15 over 1500 in this area here. All right. So you can see the longer longer term traders they they want to they were more interested in selling up here. Okay. And then this last minute here they pulled. Okay. So uh, it's still kind of fickle. We're not really really sure. Um, uh, you know what their intent is yet uh, if they really want to trade they'll stay in the book because they will not give up their place in line right they uh, it's a it's a FIFO market first in first out so if you're first in at this price level you're first in line uh, and uh, that's an advantage so if they want to trade they're not going to uh, jump away from uh, that price level okay Uh, yeah, yeah, we can. We we we've been looking at some of the correlation uh, uh, correlated uh, markets here. Um, the um, we can uh, add that as well here. So let's take let's take a look at that. Okay, so this is another add-on feature with the Bookmap Advanced version, uh, and this is the uh, the correlation tracker. Okay, so we'll enable it. Uh, I'm going to add the Nasdaq here, uh, and um, uh, this is. Uh, so we have the blue line here is the NASDAQ compared to the S&P. So uh, now, now we're, we're getting even, even more data here uh, to understand how are the correlated markets behaving uh, compared to uh, uh, the, the current market that we're looking at. All right. And, uh, yeah, a lot of sideways action here as well. Uh, but you can see that the a um, little more aggressive, uh, it's a little more bullish here. Uh, with this NASDAQ, uh, you know, we're making, they made a higher high here uh, in this range, okay? And uh, they came back up and tested that higher high, and we're just about, looks like we're just about to break out of it, right? So, uh, uh, but we be wary here. Uh, you know, maybe we should just jump over to the NASDAQ and take a look, uh, because um, uh, the, uh, uh, yeah, we'll probably, you know, look for maybe a trap here uh, to trade back into the range. But, um, okay, the NASDAQ just broke out. Look at the S&P, though. Okay, it, it didn't. Uh, it broke out of this, this little micro uh, swing here at 11.15, but it, um, the, uh, the, high, the high of the day is up here at, uh, at 66. All right. Okay. All right. So um, one thing about uh, correlating the uh, stock indexes, um, they're – you know, you won't. A lot of times, you won't see a lot of um, uh, uh, difference between the two. Uh, we're actually seeing some right now. That's a, that's a good thing. Uh, so we understand the Nasdaq is uh, uh, pretty strong here. Okay. All right. So all sorts of strategies that you can uh, you can come up with based on this data. Uh, maybe you're uh, uh, looking for uh, you know a, a quick scalp to the upside on the Nasdaq. Uh, uh, and then, or maybe you're just looking for uh, the S&P to um, uh, to follow along. So uh, you you can see there's a bit of a lag here. It's not as bullish, but maybe it will uh, it'll follow along and come up and test these guys here uh, at 66 and a half. Right? Okay. The um, or uh, you know maybe um, uh, you're looking for uh, for hedging these. Okay. Um, and uh, you're, you're looking for, uh, uh, you know, at, when we see the breakout here of the NASDAQ, maybe you want to short the NASDAQ and go along the S&P. Uh, or if you're looking for a move back into the range, uh, then you, you would do uh, the opposite there. Okay. 
uh, yeah, the um, the correlation tracker. Um, I believe it's uh, twenty dollars a month. Okay. Uh, and uh, the iceberg detector is is twenty dollars a month too. Okay. So there's the the newer version of the iceberg detector, uh, and uh, maybe this is what Darcy is uh, is talking about. The um, uh, the number is plotted on on the chart here since the this is a pretty significant upgrade to that indicator uh, so the, the the price has changed uh, where before it was right here uh, in the um, uh, in the column uh, you know the current order book column as bars okay so uh, re real nice here uh, you can you can see the um, uh, see the the, the difference uh, you know you see every single bit in fact, let's zoom into this iceberg here, and let me show you what I mean. Okay. As I start to zoom in, we're going to start to pull apart all of this activity, and you can see that there were several uh, icebergs here. Well, it was you know the same the same uh, guy probably just uh, uh, they continue to hit the bid and he continues to absorb, right? But you can see the activity here, okay, and you can see where he stopped right there, uh, and then as I zoom back out, okay. It's still here. It's still here, and still, still absorbing, right? Yeah. So this was his area. Okay. All right. So the uh, the indicator. So actually, I would I would recommend um, uh, Marco the uh, uh, you can get the add-on package. So uh, you can just subscribe to that monthly uh, instead of them individually. Uh, and uh, in fact, I think the individual ones are only for those that have lifetime uh, bookmap previously. Uh, if you want the if you want the uh, add-ons now, you you need to subscribe to the add-on package, uh, and you get a deal on it anyway. I mean, uh, the um, uh, you get all of them with the add-on package. So the iceberg is twenty. The uh, correlation is 20, and the um, uh, uh, trading from the chart, the one-click trading, is uh, is 20. Okay, as as well as you, you also get the large lot tracker here, this little white line uh, in the uh, in this column, uh, and you also get the imbalance indicator up here. Okay, so it's just better to uh, uh, go for the uh, uh, the package deal, uh, and then you get all of them, right? Yeah, that's. I think that's fifty bucks for the package. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Well, uh, let's see. That Nasdaq is uh, still strong, right? The S and P really hasn't followed suit. I mean, it's still up at the high area here, uh, but not the highest high. Uh, and um, uh, if we see this uh, this Nasdaq start to sell off, well then maybe that's an opportunity here for that S and P uh, to sell off too, okay? Because it's weaker, right? If this trades, if the Nasdaq trades right back into the range, okay? That's uh, you know that's how you can uh, you can look at this, or uh, one one potential way. Uh, like I said, there are there are several. Okay. Let's see. Any other questions? No. Okay. Well, it's been uh, it's been pretty slow. Um, so um, uh, you know, it's good to go over these things in, in some detail uh, and then answer you guys' questions uh, since it's been slow. But you know, un understanding uh, the liquidity here, uh, the longer term. And the uh, shorter term, and understanding how they kind of play together, uh, is uh, an important concept here. Okay, uh, because a lot of us understand the volume, the traded volume, uh, but we don't we don't understand the liquidity because we've never had to really study it before, uh, because we never had it plotted onto the chart. So uh, it, it's uh, it's it's new information for us, uh, and uh, we don't really uh, quite understand it. Uh, but now uh, you can see it. Uh, 
Um, Marco, yeah, I mean, um, uh, some of the possible trades. Well, I mentioned one down here. Okay, I thought that looked pretty pretty decent. Uh, and uh, you know, the quick move down, the absorption here, uh, the retest. Okay, with uh, with very little volume on the uh, so I mean, basically exhaustion, right? Uh, in this little area here. Okay, let me get off. Let me take off that correlation tracker for the moment. Okay, right in this area here, and then they then they break this microstructure right here. Okay, and look at the aggressive volume. This looks good, you know. And then you add in like uh, they they jump in here with high liquidity, uh, you know, with over 1,400 contracts here. Okay, that looks good too. You know, they skewed the auction after uh, uh, you know starting to see a flurry of buying in this area. Okay, be looking for test of. Uh, the next swing, and that would be this level here. Okay, so um, that's uh, sort of I, I don't know. I, I explained that earlier, Marco. I I, uh, I hope that helped. All right. Well, S and P starting to follow suit a little bit, a little more, a little more uh, buying here. Uh, let's see if these guys mean business at sixty six and a half. All right. Looks pretty good. Looks pretty good for testing it. Look how they're starting to lower the offer here. Okay, now they're down. They're a little more uh, liquidity here at 67. Okay, also 68 is, is starting to get uh, a lot brighter here. 1,540 contracts up here. Okay, well maybe we'll get a quick push through here, uh, and then uh, I would uh, uh, be anticipating uh, if if that. I mean, there's some some different scenarios that might occur. Okay, we might get a quick push through, and then a retest back to this area, and we might get a flip of the book. Okay, maybe the um, maybe price accepts above this 66 and a half level. Okay, that's one. Uh, the other is uh, maybe we see a, a kind of a false breakout here, a trap, uh, and then a move right back into the range. Okay, that's another. Uh, or uh, maybe they'll just start to get really aggressive here uh, on the on the offer, and you see them uh, hit the bid with aggressive sells. Okay. All right, so we're getting uh, kind of a, a little bit of both here in that sense. Like they're aggressively starting to sell, but look at them just skew the auction right here, All right? And it, it stopped that aggressive selling for the moment. Okay, it has to reconsider the market now. Reconsider the uh, we're channeling between very tight high liquidity here. Okay, and maybe maybe they uh, are trying to press price up through here, uh, and um, uh, and then uh, you know they're they're going to pull this liquidity and they're looking for a return back to the mean. Okay, so uh, we'll 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 see it. We'll be able to put it together. Uh, to me, uh, you know, I, I'm seeing some uh, some nice volume up here. Uh, you know, I like that. Uh, and um, uh, but the uh, the auction here uh, is is kind of sideways. Okay. What about the icebergs? Uh, you know, definitely more absorption here on the icebergs. On the offer, uh, let's see. Uh, Roger, new subscriber. Okay, great. Well, welcome. I think you came in a, a bit late. Um, you might have missed my uh, initial uh, uh, coverage of, of what Bookmap is showing you. Uh, that's fine, though. Uh, this is recorded, and you, you can you can uh, you can watch that. Uh, let's see. Solid vertical line. Uh, is delineation yeah that, that is correct uh, this solid white line here okay this here is the current here's our breakout all right um, but um, let's let's see if we get any follow-through here all right this this area here is the current market this is no different than the dome all right so you can see that uh, when the numbers change in the dome it'll be reflected in the heat map all right and um, uh, then uh, the uh, 
the interesting part though is to the left because to the left we record this activity here of that auction uh, and then we plot it onto the chart for you so you can see it. Okay, let's see. However, I see changing shades. Uh, uh, okay, um, yeah, th this is a good question. Um, so, I mean, this is this is recorded data here. Now, if I zoom out a little bit, you're going to see the heat map uh, change a little bit, right? Uh, the reason uh, it's a little complex to uh, describe this, but uh, the reason why uh, is that um, uh, we need we need a reference. So um, when I zoom in, uh, we're 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 getting kind of the the area here, and there's a there's this um, automatic contrast configurations here, okay, and you can start to play around with some of these uh, uh, settings here uh, to look at something very specific, right? Uh, so uh, the um, uh, as I zoom out, you might see the heat map change. Okay, it, the liquidity still hasn't changed. It's, it's historical. It's, it's it's all been uh, uh, recorded here. Okay, it's impossible for it to change. But we want to give you uh, a reference uh, to uh, this liquidity uh, around the area here. So let's zoom into this area here. Okay, and we see how this area got a little brighter here, right? And under here. Okay, the liquidity didn't change. Uh, it's just that uh, we're giving you kind of uh, more of a reference uh, in this viewable chart window. Okay, so. Um, uh, it depends on your zoom. That's uh, that's the the key here. All right. Hope that answers your question, Roger. All right. Well, let's see what occurred here. Well, as I was talking, um, uh, we can see what uh, kind of unfolded. They pulled here. Uh, we see the um, a high liquidity that was underneath here. Uh, the breakout started to occur, but then look at them jump in here on the offer. Okay, and and this is this is what I was talking about earlier. Uh, this area here is aggressive uh, on the offer. Okay, there they were here at uh, at at 68, and they are here at 68. Okay, but then they're they're um, uh, lowering their offer one and two and three t t or four ticks here, uh, and um, uh, they want to be sellers. Okay, now that's pretty aggressive. What if they had instead these guys here uh, at uh, at 67 and a half and uh, 67 and three quarters? Uh, you know, they, they started to uh, place it up above. Okay, in fact, they did uh, in some cases here, as we can see. Uh, but um, uh, you know, this uh, that would show a lot uh, a lot more uh, 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 bullish uh, activity uh, because uh, you would see. I mean, they're, they're, they want to be filled, but at higher areas, right? But this is showing pretty aggressive uh, skew here, right? So, uh, yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're trading back down, and now these guys are pulling here, okay? So we'll see if they're still involved here, but uh, now I'm looking for a trade right kind of back into the mean, all right? And we're, we're getting it. Hmm, it's not changing when you zoom in and um, at all. Okay, it should. Uh, you'll you'll see the um, uh, the the reference will will change uh, as you can see as I zoom in and out here. Right. Okay. Um, but um, uh, that's a, a one of the points here uh, using Bookmap uh, because uh, and let me explain it this way. Uh, I think this would be best. Uh, for those of you uh, who are familiar with uh, Photoshop, or let's just let's just take an image, uh, and um, uh, let's say on your phone, and you adjust that picture. Uh, you know, you have uh, some sort of software in there that you can adjust the uh, the, the color balance, or uh, you know, the uh, hue, satura saturation, etc. Okay. Uh, let's just stick with hue. You adjust the hue in a black and white photo. 
right? So uh, some of the brighter areas become brighter and some of the darker areas, um, you know, they, uh, they become darker. Right. So um, uh, that's for that very specific set of data. Okay. It's one photo. Uh, if um, uh, it, this is a constantly changing market, so the uh, the heat map changes because you'll see that all of a sudden someone will jump in with not 1,500 contracts up here, but maybe 2,000, maybe 3,000. Right, that'll skew that photo, and um, uh, now it, it blows it out. Right, everything's going to be white, uh, and uh, well, everything's going to be white up here, and everything else in reference uh, is, uh, you know, it doesn't make as much sense. So what we'll do, uh, or what the software does, is it, uh, it it'll make this area, you know, if it was 3,000 contracts, it'll make it the brightest and it will scale the rest to show the reference of that liquidity at these levels compared to uh, that high liquidity up here. Okay, all right, you got it fixed, Roger. Okay, good. All right, so um, yeah, I hope that helps. Um, a lot of times uh, you'll just need to uh, just tweak your, um, your heat map a little bit depending on your zoom or depending on that high liquidity that jumps in here. So it's a, it's a constantly changing uh, uh, set of data, uh, and, uh, and we need to adjust for it, All right? So uh, there's a quick reference here with the uh, black cutoff. As you can see, I can very quickly, uh, you know, change that as well, uh, which is a nice feature. All right? All right, guys. Well, uh, let's see. I don't really... Um, I mean, we see some guys, they're, they're starting to come back in here at, in, at 65, uh, but uh, it's really, there's really nothing, uh, nothing too interesting here. Uh, uh, you know, the, what they're probably looking at, I, I would imagine, is uh, looking at maybe this, uh, this trend line here, you know, something like this, uh, and starting to position themselves, okay? Because we also have, uh, and this did break out, right? Uh, it broke out from this level here, or maybe a little bit higher here. Right, uh, and uh, and it's still holding at, at the moment. Okay, so that's just the structure alone is is showing kind of bullish behavior. Okay, uh, but uh, that's countered here with uh, you know the high liquidity here on the offer and aggressive liquidity, uh, and uh, the uh, uh, now they're starting to kind of jump back in here at 65. Okay, to support price. There there there's a little bit higher liquidity, almost 1,500 contracts there. Okay. So in this sense, uh, I, I would not be trading. Uh, you know, the, I don't have the clarity here. Okay, down here, I did have that clarity. Okay, this made good sense to me, uh, and uh, uh, that's just for me, right? Uh, maybe you're looking at something very different. Regardless of how you trade, you still have the transparency in the market. Okay, you understand the the uh, larger players using iceberg orders here, that higher liquidity. Uh, the the historical uh, auction here uh, and the and the traded volume uh, where is it trading how much uh, and what type All right so um, yeah I hope that helps you guys uh, let's uh, let's wrap it up we'll call it a day and uh, we will uh, see you tomorrow just a couple last questions here let's see. Okay, uh, Francisco, you're, you're, he's he's talking about um, uh, the uh, a point of control with the um, uh, within the range uh, of the uh, of this extension. Well, this is a, a real nice uh, feature that uh, you can use. So um, I have here. We can turn on the VWAP. Okay. So there's two volume columns that I have here. You can you can add multiple columns here. You just right click in here. Uh, and you can tr you can actually uh, uh, you can insert a new column, okay? Uh, and you can it's unlimited. I mean, you can con continue to uh, insert uh, columns, uh, and we have different data types here, okay? So um, uh, we can look at a trades counter, okay? Not volume, but the amount of um, events that took place, right? And uh, uh, we a lot of times we want to know that data because 
uh, it's it's not really uh, a volume driven. It is event driven because a lot of the algos are um, uh, they're not using block orders of like a hundred lot. They're using a hundred small one lot orders. So it's more a lot of times it's just more about the uh, number of trades. Okay, we also have a, a quotes counter. Okay, quotes that were refreshed uh, at specific levels. And, uh, and you can see that data here as well. These always give some pretty nice profiles. Um, but uh, what uh, Francisco is talking about here uh, is matching up the CVP and SVP. Uh, the CVP, or let me know if I got it wrong, Francisco, but the CVP here uh, is showing you the volume within this viewable chart range. So you can study that. So let's say I'm, I'm just interested in the volume in this, in this area here where we kind of broke from. Okay. Well, here we go. Here it is. All right. And I have the VWAP of that. It's this little white line here. Let me get rid of these other columns for the moment. All right. Okay. Thanks, Francisco. Uh, and then um, uh, so that, that's the uh, the volume profile for this, uh, this range. But here's our session range. And okay. this is from when I opened up Bookmap. All right. And, uh, and we can see uh, what's what's uh, what's going on here, uh, and we have the VWAP of that as well. So you know, all sorts of strategies can evolve out of this. Uh, if you're uh, if you're bearish, uh, then uh, maybe you're looking for a return back to either the VWAP or the point of control of the session down here. All right. Okay. So you can trade VWAP to VWAP, or like a low volume node to low volume node. Uh, and um, uh, or low volume node to high volume node, uh, all sorts of uh, different uh, uh, ways of um, uh, starting to apply this to your trading. All right. Yeah, it is really cool. I I I, I really like that. There's also another for those of you who are accustomed to um, uh, reading the uh, the tape, the uh, uh, you know like a, the time and sales. Well, I mean, basically, the, the time and sales is here. Uh, it's this traded volume, uh, and you can see it, right? Uh, but uh, we also have a time and sales column, okay, uh, as you can see here. Uh, but let me let me change that back to the um, uh, volume, okay? And the, uh, the volume column, um, we can split this out. Okay, and uh, there's just right click and 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 choose um, uh, uh, format. Okay, and here split it out, and we can see the aggressor classification here. So, uh, what kind of insight can we get here? Uh, we we can we can look right at it and we can see like who who might be winning the battles in some of these areas. All right, and uh, I'm not really seeing anyone <laughs> win the battle here uh, at all, uh, but. Um, uh, that's why it's, uh, they're both kind of equal on each side here, right? A lot of traders like this because they want it. They want to get involved uh, when uh, uh, they start to lift the offer or hit hit the hit the bid really hard. Okay. Now there's also a ton of resetting options here. So just right click again uh, and then choose reset. Uh, and um, uh, here's what you can do. Uh, we can uh, configure these. Uh, you can reset it now. Or uh, you can schedule a reset for every uh, minute or hour uh, or at a specific time. Uh, or uh, there's a conditional reset. So if uh, price trades out of an area uh, and then quickly comes right back in within uh, amount of uh, seconds that you choose here, uh, then uh, this data here uh, is going to remain. Uh, so it, it was just a quick move out and it won't reset your data. It will reset if it stays outside of this area for a specific amount of time okay, that you choose, maybe a second, two and a half seconds, or maybe five seconds. Okay. Uh, and then um, uh, what else here? The, there's another, uh, I, I really like this feature is just uh, the reset. Uh, click on uh, and select uh, reset uh, on double click. So uh, right now uh, I want to reset it. I want to see like how it's behaving right now uh, in this area here. Okay, and uh, and then now you can read it, right? So who's getting more aggressive right now? Okay, buyers starting to come in. 
Okay, 102 versus 53. And this is for those that really want to pinpoint, uh, you know, some of those uh, some of those entries. Okay, they're looking for something very specific. Uh, but again, uh, now you have the heat map. Okay, so maybe you're just looking for, um, uh, you know, them to uh, uh, pull back a little bit uh, down just a couple ticks. I don't know. Uh, it's up to you. But uh, uh, the, all the data is here, uh, and you can format it uh, to your liking. Okay. All right, guys. Well, if there's no more questions, then uh, let's uh, let's call it a day, and we will see you tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. Take care. Bye bye.